Now, returning to our top story tonight, a major anti-Semitic attack on a Jewish man who was severely bashed in a park in Arncliffe, Sydney. He took at least 12 punches to the head. He had two black eyes, concussion and four spinal fractures as a result of a group of pro-Palestinian supporters surrounding him and three large men pummeling him. He was in hospital for four days. He recalls the men calling him insults like pro-Jew pro dog, and they said to him, why are you in our area? Go back to Vaucluse. I spoke with the man today. He's not going to speak publicly. Completely understandable. He's very afraid for his safety. He says he's lucky to be alive. New South Wales police have told us this evening that they are investigating and they ask that anyone who has information on the identities of these men should contact Crime Stoppers. Let's bring in tonight's panel now. Joining me is National Senate Leader Bridget McKenzie and Labor MP Andrew Charlton. Welcome to you both. Andrew, we're seeing a clear crisis of anti-Semitism since the October 7 terror attacks in Israel. This example just in the heart of Sydney and Arncliffe, the latest shocking, shocking, sickening incident. What needs to be done here because the Jewish community are feeling unsafe? Well, Shari, from your description, this terrible incident involves at least two crimes. First, a serious assault, and secondly, hate speech under the New South Wales vilification laws of 2018. The police are investigating and should be investigating and should be prosecuting those crimes to the fullest extent. Now, I'm sure that more broadly, many of your viewers would be concerned about a rise in violence and vilification across Australia since the war began. We've seen a number of terrible incidents, including posters that depict Prime Minister Netanyahu as Adolf Hitler, Nazi salutes outside a Jewish museum, uh, anti-Semitism expressed at rallies. We've also seen a tenfold increase in reported incidents of Islamophobia. And let me be clear, no anti-Semitism and no Islamophob Islamophobia is acceptable in Australia today. The police should be prosecuting and investigating these incidents to the fullest extent. Bridget McKenzie, do you think we need to see more leadership from the Prime Minister from the Albanese government on anti-Semitism? Absolutely, Shari. I think the Prime Minister could be a lot more forward-leaning about uh, anti-Semitic behaviour. It is at this appalling attack in Sydney. It is also the vilification of our Jewish community and our Israeli brothers and sisters uh, in the Middle East by these protests that are occurring right across the country. And it, when we said as a global community, post-World War II, never again, it was precisely this moment that we didn't want to ever see again in a liberal democracy such as ours. And I know it's been called a crisis of courage, and that is exactly what's required now. Courage from our law enforcement agencies to uphold the law, um, the Vilification Act that Andrew spoke about in my own uh, state of Victoria, the Racial and Religious Tolerance Act, needs to be upheld swiftly uh, as soon as these incidences occur and not have police sitting on their hands because it is our Jewish community, kids are afraid to go to school, we've got businesses being targeted simply because they are owned by Jewish Australians. I mean, it is abhorrent and uh, we need to crack down on it with the full force of the law. I mean, you mentioned businesses. One of the businesses that there's now this campaign, even a petition against, is Spotlight, you know, the, the, mm. the fabric and sewing store. And there's calls for people to boycott Spotlight because people claim that it's, you know, owned or run by Jewish people. I, I don't know even know if that's true or not, but that it's outrageous that businesses are being targeted and, and that there's boycotts on Australian businesses. It, it's insane. Um, on a related... Look, I just can't believe it's happening in our country. I really no, can't. So we've really got to push back as individuals and as leaders. 